What up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with a new season of P Valley on Stars, you guys. After a what it's been like a year and a half, right? Because the last time we saw P Valley was in 2020. We went all of 2021 without P Valley, but we are finally back for season two of P Valley, you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is season two. This is episode number one. Episode was titled The Land. So, before we go ahead and jump into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on my channel and are not subscribed to the channel, do me that favor by liking the video, you guys, subscribing to my channel, turning on your post notifications, sharing the video, you guys, and with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss P-Valley, shall we? Down in the valley where the girls get naked, if you throw in bands, then you know she gonna shake it, one, two, break them. Three, four, break them. These niggas grind hard, but these bitches grind harder. Climbing up the pole just to get out the bottle. The crowd below, stay ready for the show. The pimps, the... We make ballin' on the sky look easy. Look at my gangster walking on the ceiling. I'm done. All right, you guys. So this episode, we open up and we see Darnell from... What is our show? The Shy. So, you know, on the shot, he got a whole lot of kids. And on this show, we see him at a kid's birthday party. And them kids are running amok. So, he tell his girl, like, hey, you know, I'm about to run down to the 7-Eleven real quick. So, he gets in the car. We see this side. We see him. He's driving. He sees a sign. It got that bitch Patrice Woodbine on there. And it says, this bitch. And then it also said, um, what did it say? titty fucker or something like that i cracked up laughing and then to the then you got on the other side you got a, a young lady outside of the pink and she got a sign and that sign said it says car wash free wings and titties so he he's like he looking at patrice's thing and then he looking at this girl she's like come on so he drives up so when he gets to the gate there is Big L and there is Autumn there. So if you looked at the, um, so there are prices that you can, you know, there are different things that you can get done at this car wash. The first one is a hand job and that costs $30. You can get detailing, that's 50. And then if you really want, if you're feeling, you know, real generous with your money, you can spend a hundred dollars and get the Mercedes special. So he goes for the Mercedes special. So then we see him, he drives into the car wash and you can see you see um you see all the girls they had like cages and stuff and you know some of them got on glow they got on glow in the dark heels and whatnot and it's like damn the paint don't come up i'm like okay the paint doing good so then we see uncle clifford so, so uncle clifford comes out and, turn, and you know the spotlight hits on cliff he's like oh hell no i ain't come here for this shit. but then he says uh uh uh, uh take your hands off the wheel come deeper come deeper so he does that so then we see the girls and you know they start washing the car and they dancing and whatnot you see a girl on a sky on a sky roof you see a girl right here girls on the hood and girls over here you know you see them with their titties all on the um windshield and everything it's just like wow so then he keeps driving that there's this and then actually when, some, when uncle clifford moved there was a girl she was like this and then she just flipped out and flipped over and i'm like damn mama like i would have just been like here take it all take it all take it take all my money boo so then we see he tell he goes down further and this is where we see the mercedes special and baby mercedes Mercedes did that shit like I was like oh okay Mercedes I see you what really threw me was when Mercedes heels like the stiletto part of her heels you know when you in the club and it's your birthday and they come up with the sparklers it was sparklers on the end of her heels I was like girl you better do that so while Mercedes is dancing we see him he grabbing at himself down you know down in his nether region and he he just going to town on it. I'm like damn nigga I be thinking about that I'm because you know some dudes are pervs but he's in his car so he's not really you know he's not a, he's not violating a woman or anything so it's okay but baby at one point he just 
you know, just exploded everywhere in his car, mostly on his dashboard. So Uncle Clifford say, here's some weed wings and some wet wipes to clean that up right there. I would love to have me some weed wings. Really would love to have some weed wings. So then we see Mercedes after this is over with. Her shoulder's messed up. An arm comes up like, you need some ice. But she says, I need to make you a doctor's appointment for that. And Mercedes like, don't do that. I don't need it. So then um, we see Uncle Clifford. He's got this girl named Juniper or Jupiter, her baby. And she's like, Uncle Clifford, how do you get her to be quiet? I can't even get her to be quiet. Big L was like, because she gave that baby some burr. You guys, when they said burr, it just reminds me so much of how country my fam how me and my family are. Because that is what we say. We don't say beer. I know it's spelled B-E-E-R, but we say burr here in Texas in the South. Uncle Cliff, like, I ain't gave that baby no damn burr. I gave her some whiskey because she's teething. But you don't put, you don't really put whiskey. I thought you put whiskey on the baby's gums, not in a bottle, but hey, it's Uncle Cliff with you guys. So Autumn tells all the ladies like, hey. I need y'all to confirm y'all transfers before y'all, because I don't need another mess like that tonight. So Mercedes looking at her like, did you send me my Skrilla? She said, yes. So Mercedes is looking at her phone and she's looking at her bank statement. Mercedes was negative $124 and we see two mortgages have come out. And I'll talk about the mortgages in just a little bit. And she's, when, she, when Mercedes asked, um, um, Autumn, did she give her her Skrilla? She says, Big L, did you get your Skrilla? He said, yes, I did. And then Mercedes like, why the fuck does Big L get, get a cut? I'm the one that's the main attraction. Like, when everybody comes here, they come because of the Mercedes special. So, and she, then she said, Big L ain't got no pussy. He said, it's my wings. She said, yeah, and your wings are a little bit burnt sometimes. So then Uncle Clifford, you know, we see them, we see some of the girls and they're looking at the television. So on the television, we see Keyshawn and she's in a music video with Lil Murder, you know, um, M, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, humpback, humpback, I, Mississippi, pride, pride, country bro, homebred, raised off cornbread. Yeah, I know the whole song. I know the entire, I know the song. So shut up. But yeah, so she's dancing in that video. Y'all remember what happened with last season at the season finale with Mercedes, I mean, not Mississippi and Diamond. So we ain't fucking with her right now. So that's what that's definitely what Mercedes is at. And Uncle Clifford sees La Murder and she runs over there to that TV like, uh-uh, turn, turn it off. We ain't, we ain't, uh -uh. Miss Mississippi, she ain't, you know, she ain't her energy ain't coming up in here because you guys remember what happened at murder night so i'm gonna pause here you guys and we're gonna move forward so after that we see uncle clifford he goes into the office and big l and autumn are in there so it looks like they have been applying for the ppp loan or some kind of a loan but they're getting denied for it because they're not oh i know what they're i know what they were doing it was like those, it was like essential workers were getting, you know, extra fun. I remember that. Like if you were an essential worker, okay, I remember. So they got denied for it. So Autumn asked Uncle Cliff, well, how much of that um, $250,000 is left? He says, mm, and she, he says, ask him, talking about Big L. So she looked at Big L, Big L says 25,000. She was like $25,000? Helpful, how many burgers did you buy? Cause I gave you $250,000 and you took care of that, that $55,000, you know, predatory loan that you had. Where it shows you should have about $195,000 left. So where the fuck is that at? So Uncle Clifford tells her that, you know, well, I have to keep these girls afloat. You know, I didn't want them out there giving head to, you know, um, to be fed in a sense. She says, okay. So that would be, so you still should have something left. And then Uncle Clifford hit her with, bitch, you remember what happened in the the, the um, boom boom room? You remember that situation? We had to take care of that too. I'm just thinking to myself, girl, why in the hell did you give Uncle Clifford all the money? She was already in debt. So, yeah. And then Uncle Clifford tells her that, you know, I'm the one that came up with Pussy Land. 
So then we also found out that Autumn only gave Uncle Clifford 15% of the pang. So she owns the majority. And then we also found out that she got Mercedes her gym. So that was one of Mercedes's um, mortgages that she's paying. Because one mortgage was 17. Because I, I was looking at that. I'm like, why is one mortgage $17,000 and why is the other one, you know, $12,000? But okay, so she got her home mortgage and she got her gym. So then also we find out that the girls were talking because uncle clifford heard the girls out there you know hooping and hot he's like these hell was out here fighting so uncle clifford runs outside and no the girls were not fighting what happened is on the news they were saying that the lockdown was going to be ending in a week so now we get to go get the re re re, re reopening of the pike and then we also find out that mayor tydale ruffins he's died of covid so we see Andre. So Andre is back. Andre is back in Atlanta and we see his wife. So I believe his wife was a nurse, right? I think his wife is a nurse. So we see her and you guys remember in the, pen, in the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was sheltering in place. Remember like the essential workers, especially your doctors, your nurses, when they were going home to their families. You guys remember on Merits and Medicine when they got home, they took their clothes off at the door. They, you know, left them there they took a shower and then they would interact with you know if they want i think it was they sh shouldn't have interacted with their families but you know some would but then we see his wife you know she took her mask off i was looking at her face i'm like damn you really have broken out because of that mask you know what i think that's probably what's going on with my i just thought about that that's what's going on with my skin it's the mask because i wear my mask a lot because I, I thought about that because prior to the, prior to this my skin especially my face was never patchy and i didn't have eczema and stuff it's the mask i just thought about that while my skin is looking the way it looks so i gotta find some skin stuff so she had to go upstairs because he hadn't refilled her. she has a little refrigerator downstairs in the basement he didn't refill it she goes upstairs where he is and he is upstairs playing video games and she was like, you know, I've been calling you. You haven't answered the phone. And then she looks at his phone. And she says, also, it looks like, you know, Eloise has reached out to you. And somebody named Haley has reached out to you. She's sending her condolences. Baby, when she said Haley, he came up there and snatched that damn phone. But then he did call Eloise. And that's when he found out that Mayor Ruffins has passed away. So he told Eloise, like, you know, I'm coming down. There. And his wife's like, no, 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 no. And I'm looking like, oh, okay. But then when she explained why she flipped out the way she did, because when she came in, he asked her how was her day. She said it was good. But turns out her day wasn't good because she had lost six patients that day. And I think the day before she said she had lost 12 patients. I know that that's something that's going to stick with doctors and nurses for the rest of their lives. Dealing with, you know, when the pandemic first happened, I know that that is something that's just going to live with those people forever. I just don't know how they could ever get through it so then we see patrice woodbine's raggedy ass i don't know what that helper was doing but i know there's a she was passing out cds and you could hear a sermon of her i tweeted this fuck patrice woodbine raggedy helper let's pause here you guys and move forward all right you guys so next up we got Lil murder and dj never scared never scared and they were working on some new music and I, I've actually just listened to the song on Apple Music. That song is a fucking bop, you guys. That shit is good. So, Lil Murder and, like I said, Lil Murder and um, DJ Never Scared, they're working on some, they're working on a song. When they when Lil Murder started hitting them pots and pans, I was like, okay, Murder, I see you. I see you, Murder. So, they talking about the paint getting ready to open. So, Lil Murder asks DJ Nevis, did you want back to the pint? He says, nah, I ain't, I ain't going back there. I want to live. So then he says, has Uncle Clifford reached out to you? And, you know, Murder was like, why would that nigga reach out to me? <laughs> I mean, you... I ain't got nothing to say about Murder. But at one point in this episode, at one point in this thing, Lil Murder was reading text messages bet between him and Uncle Clifford. I think Lil Murder got some feelings. I mean, we knew that we know Murder got feelings for Uncle Clifford, but I don't think Murder is ready to be openly 
Well, I see, with, with, with Uncle Clifford, I know her pronouns are she and her. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. So, next up we see Mercedes and Autumn. So, those two live together. And <laughs> Autumn wakes up in the morning. And you can hear Mercedes. She's just moaning because baby girl is in there giving herself pleasure. Because she ain't had no D-I-C-K in a minute. Because Maine is in jail. So... When Mercedes finally came out of her room, she was she and Autumn were talking. So with the paint getting ready to re reopen, Autumn feels that they need to get some new girls because they have lost some girls. So Gidget, she's no longer at the paint because Gidget went home because her mom died, and Gidget is the white girl. And Keyshawn, Miss Mississippi, she is doing something different. So they don't so they've lost some girls. But when Autumn says that she wants to audition new girls, I'm saying like, hell no, we don't need no new girls. Uh uh, it's it's bad enough that we, because Mercedes thing is, they're already they already putting their money in a pot, and they just have to split that money. You bring in some new bitches, we got to split that shit even more ways. So, no, we ain't doing that. So then we move over to Miss Mississippi. So we see Mississippi, and she is in. She got a, a setup like mine. She got a ring light. And she got her phone, so she's. It looks like she's on Instagram Live, and it's like four hundred thousand people on there. So she's doing her thing, and she's telling them like, "Hey, get down, you know, in that um pen tweet, in that pen comment. That's her. So she got a business. So she's running the business. And you guys remember that promoter wanted to work with her, so she's got all kind of brand deals at this point. So we see that raggedy ass Derek. He's out there with the baby, but he's also watching. Mississippi as she's dancing so when she comes out you know oh god I just can't believe she's still with Derek and I'm still pissed off at Keyshawn for what she did to Diamond girl I ain't gonna ever forgive you for that shit I am not gonna forgive you for that shit so we see Mercedes so you guys remember Mercedes has her her dance squad so we see her she's talking to the girls they're on zoom and with the lockdown getting ready to be op over She's like, okay, so with the lockdown about to be over, y'all can come down and we can do this and this and that. And some of the girls are like, um, yeah, um, my mom said I can't come. And she was like, why? Well, my mom said she can't afford it. So she's at a standstill at this point. Damn. But that is what the pandemic did, though. You know, the pandemic did take a toll on a lot of people. A lot of people lost their jobs during the pandemic. A lot of people, you know, just couldn't, it, it did, the beginning of the pandemic, the lockdown, that did affect a lot of people. So, what I'm going to do here, you guys, is pause here and wrap, and move forward. So, we see little Murder. So, Murder went down to the funeral home, and he's looking for Wody. So, he's he's calling out for Wody. <laughs> When Wody hopped up at that casket, Murder's like, whoa. I was I was with Murder. Like, um, nigga, you could have got blown away and actually been in that in that casket yourself. So Murder is telling Wody that he wants to do a tour. And Wody's like, you want to do a tour in the middle of a pandemic? And he was like, who's gonna be your draw? So um Murder's thing is he wants Keyshawn to be the draw. And, you know, Wody's like, you know, that nigga that she with, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna let the heat, from what I'm hearing, he keeping her locked down in that house. And then Murder's like, I can't believe he a white nigga. A lot of us couldn't believe that that was a white boy. And then the fact that he had the gall to call him Diamond a nigger with a hard ER. He called him a nigger with a hard ER. So... After that, Murder calls up Keyshawn. She says, Murder, I ain't heard from you. I, he says, I got you, Keyshawn. I got you money. So he says, he tells her, you know, hey, I want to do this tour with me and you. You know, we go here, we go there. And she was like, um, Murder, no, I can't do that. So she's with her baby. And I didn't understand the significance, the significance of her doing this at one because she took the baby's diaper, threw it in the thing, but then she got all the other diapers and pile them in the trash can and I was like what the hell is that the purpose of that but it'll come up a little bit later <laughs> so you remember I told you guys that Andre was getting ready to go he went he was in Atlanta 
but he's going back to Chuckalisa. So he gets to Chuckalisa and he goes to that funeral home. Bitch, when I tell you, when I saw Ty Dale Ruffin and all of that damn green, I was like, bitch, is this luck of the Irish? I cracked. I was like, what in the hell is going on? So Eloise comes in and, you know, she and Andre, they, they rap, they, you know, they kick it with each other. They talk to each other and she's asking him, you know, they need another palm beer. Come to find out he got another. So I, I don't know how many kids he got, but he got a new one. I think it's six. It was, she said, well, actually it's five, but he said he did back with the, another baby mama and got another one that's a year old. <laughs> so, yeah. So then this funeral, once again, Lucky the Irish because everybody is in green. So we see Ernestine, who is Uncle Clifford's grandmother. She's watching the funeral and she tells she tells um Uncle Clifford come in there and see if he see Mookie. So he comes in there, he says, I don't see no damn Mookie. And she says, Nigga, take that damn thing off. I'm talking about his mask, because he came in there with a mask on. So she was like, you know what? So Mookie's not there. You know what that means? She at home making her chitlins. I was like, ugh, baby, I just don't understand what it is about us black people, especially Southern black people that love chitlins. Like, I think I'm like one of the only people in my family that does not eat chitlins. My, ch my family eats every part of the goddamn pig that they make. They eat chitlins, hog maw, oh, got pig feet. Bitch, but my family, they country asses. Love y'all to death, but y'all country asses. Oh, God, I hate, like, I used to hate holidays. I, I, I scratched that. I ain't gonna say I used to hate holidays. I love the holidays with my family. I used to hate going over to my grandmother's house when she would be, in, when she would be in the process of cooking them motherfucking chitlins because the house just smells like nothing but rancid ass. And just, I was like, oh, big mama, why are you cooking that? That stinks. Like, I have never ate, in my 32 years of living, I have never once ate a chitlin. I don't intend to. I never, when you say, they say never, say never. But that is one thing that I can say is a never. He will never, ever, ever eat a chitlin as long as he live. Because it just, oh, God, it just, it smells, it smells putrid. And then when you just look at it, when you look at it, because I be looking at my family, I look, I look at my aunts, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins when they be eating that shit. And I'm just like, that looks like, first of all, it looks like a brain. It looks like brain matter to me. It's just, ugh. Ugh, I just don't understand. No, sh and, then, and that's no shade, because I know people who, I know there are a lot of people out there in the world who eat chitlins. That ain't no shade to y'all. I just don't understand it. And I'm just talking about my family. Because them niggas, those niggas love it. Because now my aunt who lives in my grandmother's house, she cooks it. And she cooked it last year for Christmas. And I was like, uh-uh. They were like, Jerome, you want something? I'm like, y'all know damn well I don't eat chitlins. Because my cousin said, you, Jerome, you want something? You know damn, I, you know I don't eat that shit. You've known me for 30 years. Of, you've known me for 32 years. In the last 32 years of my life, when have you ever saw me eat a chitlin? When have you ever, I mean ever, saw me eat a chitlin? I always make fun of y'all for eating. I always tell y'all how country y'all look. But hey, that's neither here nor there. So, Uncle Lippa told Ernestine, he not going out there. And, you know, she's like, you know, that rona is something that those crackers made up to keep the niggas in the house. I was like, oh. Okay, it's something that the crackers made up to keep the niggas in the house. Ernestine, girl, go off. So, remember I was telling you guys a few minutes ago about Keyshawn. So she hit those pampers. So we see Derek. He's in there changing the baby. And he's like, damn, I just bought some pampers. So Keyshawn says, did you know what? I'll go to the store and get some. So she leaves to go to the store. Now, he was reluctant at first, but she talked him into letting her go. Girl, that is sad. So he don't went from being abusive to just flat out controlling. So she gets in, the, so she goes to the store. Literally, that is the name of the store, the store. <laughs> I don't know what, it, again, that's another country thing we say, store. 
And I was looking at it, I'm like, that used to be Fred's. If you guys are not, there's a store that used to be, it was called Fred's, because you could, I could see the outline of it, where it was on the on the door, on the, um, you know, on the thing. So she's on the phone with Gidget. She and Gidget are talking. Gidget talking about how it's not lit up there where she is. And we see Diamond. So Diamond is working security at the store, right? So Diamond is basically telling people this is the beginning. So obviously this is the beginning of the pandemic. So he's 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 telling people to get the fuck away because they don't want to put on a mask. <clears throat> and I, I tweeted this. I'm like Diamond was desperately needed at the beginning of the pandemic because you guys are oh shit I'm spitting. You guys remember at the beginning of the pandemic them Karens and Kens who were screaming that their 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 rights were being violated because they couldn't they had to wear a mask in the store. Baby Diamond would have whooped that ass because he, he, I mean, he pushed one nigga. He really wanted a nigga. He was a white man. He pushed his ass so hard. And that man called him an asshole. So, him and, so, Mississippi sees him. And she's trying to talk to him and apologize. I'm like, girl, too little, too late. Like, he was like, you know, I was, and I was like, you know, well, he defended you. Like, and he told her, you know, Derek called him a nigger with the hard ER. She says he and he said I'm I I I pretty sure he called you worse. He would never say that, girl. He wouldn't. He, he wouldn't. Okay, Mississippi, go ahead and defend your redneck baby daddy. And that's exactly what he told her. Go home to your redneck baby daddy. You guys remember that necklace that he gave her last season? She tried to give it back to him. He said, mm -mm, I don't want that because obviously it don't work. I was like, ooh, Keyshawn, pick your face up, baby. Just pick it up. But you, pause, you guys, let's pause here and wrap up the episode. All right, you guys. So Uncle Clifford, she went over to Mookie's house for them damn chitlins for Ernestine. So Andre is there. <laughs> when Uncle Clifford said Ty Dale and Ty Dale, Ty Dale Jr. and Ty Dale Jr. Jr., I was like, what in the hell? Okay, Tydell Jr. and Tydell Jr. Jr. So he sees Andre. He says, hmm, so he really is dead, huh? You know, I, it was closed cast because I was just wondering. And Andre says, yes, he is dead. And you don't have to worry about anything, you know. You don't have to worry about, I don't work for Promised Land. So I guess when, when the, you know, pandemic happened, he got let go from Promised Land. So he ain't got no fucking job. So then the Kyle brother, which one was that? One of them Kyle brothers showed up. He's actually the interim mayor. And, you know, a clip was like, hmm, maybe I should throw my hat in in the race. So you guys remember that they were having that issue. They were having that thing about where they wanted to build a casino and the waterfront leads, you know, it's the pint. So they need that. And you guys remember, Uncle Clifford, she went to that raggedy bitch Patrice Woodbine for help. So... I was kind of confused what they were talking about in this scene, but I guess they're still dealing with this situation of building, you know, this casino. So it's going to be up to a boat with the people. So Uncle Clifford told him basically have a good day. And, you know, the Kyle brother, he came up trying, talking to Andre, talking about, you know, he wants to honor his um, God daddy's wishes. Um, sir, like last season, go to hell. So then we see Mercedes and Autumn. So they're at home and they're watching what's love got to do with it. So Mercedes is on Instagram and she's looking and then she sees that they, you know, she sees Autumn's Instagram and it says, you know, looking for audi holding auditions. Mercedes is like, bitch, I thought we had a conversation about not bringing more bitches into the club. Like, we already got to, again, we got to split the shit. Why are we going to add more bitches? We don't know where these bitches coming from. So, no. But Autumn, baby, Autumn is feeling herself. So, Autumn is the Autumn is the boss. She's like, I did all this shit for you ungrateful bitches. I gave you a fucking place to dance. I was like, well, damn. Tell us how you really feel. Tell us how you really fucking feel. So, now, towards the end of the episode, I was, like, again, I was a little bit confused because we got a few scenes that I kind of did. So, we see the scene with Mississippi. She's talking to her daughter about her hair. And then we had a scene with murder. 
Did we have a scene with murder? Yeah, we did have a scene with murder, but murder was writing his rap. That's all murder did. And then we had this scene where Andre, so Andre is going to be staying with Mookie for the, you know, while he's there. And, you know, he hears some gunshots at one point. I'm like, so y'all just used to the gunshots? I mean, I guess, I guess. So he goes outside to the door and there's a stack of cash on the steps and Corbin is outside. So Corbin wants to work with Andre. And I think it still has to do with this, this water, the waterfront property. Now, if you guys know, if you guys can, I mean, if you guys understood those last few scenes, fill me in so that way, because I was, like I said, I was just kind of a little confused what was going on, but that's it, you guys. Overall, great first episode. Really enjoyed the first episode. I was kind of confused why they put it on a Friday night. Well, it was, you know, it hit mid, it hit at midnight on Friday. But then, you know, the episode aired on Stars tonight. Is it going to be like this? Because I, I I hope it goes back to Sunday nights. I prefer Sundays. I prefer Sundays. But hey, that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the premiere of P-Valley. Like the video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And with that out of the way, without, nope, wrong closing. With that, you guys, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands, wear a mask, socially distance, be blessed, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow for a Love and Marriage DC and Love and Marriage Challenge. But actually, guys, I'll see you Sunday for those two. But peace out, you guys. Bye. Have a good night.